<laughs> that we're uh, talking about. I need to move it in front of so that it's here and I can see you guys there. But I can do that. I just have to. My chair got pushed back. Oh, there we go. Uh, today's kind of the first day that I actually started back to trying to get to work. Um, my, I would say that my lettuce tea is working fantastic. Um, in fact, I am no longer taking any ibuprofen or, um, Tylenol or Aleve at all. Um. And I'm drinking mushroom tea. That's what I'm drinking right now. So I'm fairly amazed by this stuff. Hi, Angela. How are you? Do I have a little boy goat <laughs> coming from your house <laughs> soon? Uh, hey, Bob, I'm glad you made it. KJ's here. Hi, Darlene. Anna's here. Oh, Anna, we had the best time. I really love that you came and visited. <laughs> that was so fun. And I did something that I don't normally do. I got a little grandson standing right here thinking that I need a fan. Apparently I'm hot. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Hi, Juanita. Hi, Colleen. Hi, Susan. So I am... Um, uh, I'm not hot, buddy. You don't have to put the fan on me. Thanks, man. Um, I've been really debating on the big giant tiles that I bought for the kitchen counter. And it's really put me at this stop space where I didn't really know if I wanted to do it or not. And so I just kind of sat with it for a while. And... There was just a whole thing, earthquake, there was just like a whole group of things that had to happen in order for that to work um, because I didn't want to spend, it was so expensive to get the edging material and all of the things. Um, oh, hey, Brenda. Can't wait for you to get back. Okay, Dreams and Visions, you from Australia, good morning. What is your name? I know you've told me multiple times, and I, I, admit, I always forget it. You need to throw that in there until I finally actually remember it. <laughs> um, so, Kelly came over today, was hanging out with me, brought me some um, sunchoke artichokes from a, another friend of ours. She had extras, and so she gave uh, both of us some of them and Kelly picked them up and dropped them off over here and she was like um, if you wanted to run into town and do errands like I would go do errands with you and I have the grandbabies and I so we started looking up because I was telling her how much the countertop was stressing me out I it was just one of those things that if I started setting tile hi Chris um, if I started setting tile then I would be stuck and it wouldn't be um, an easy fix like it wouldn't be simple to just change it out so we started looking up on um, Home Depot's web page and um, uh, I found some of the um, other ones that they have for sale there that are just totally finished has a backsplash and it's got the curve around so I ended up buying that so I am putting that in tonight, today. I've been working on it today. Um, got it set up. And so I'm still actually filming tomorrow's video um, because it's been a really crazy week. So hopefully tomorrow's video will go out on time. It may not, but I'm going to try to get it to go out on time. So, <laughs> do, do. just made it home from riding. Oh, Carol, mm -hmm. motorcycle motorcycle season is open sun chokes are a forever plant and they can cause stomach discomfort correct so what i've been looking for mm -hmm. is um vegetables things that i could grow that would continuously grow that i could use for animal feed through the winter to help supplement 
buy, purchase buying hay or grain or whatever. And sun chokes were one of those things that rabbits love. And so it really does supplement their diet. Um, and I think it is something that I can't, okay, with this lupus, I am not supposed to eat nightshades. So I'm not sure if that's considered a nightshade or not. But my main concern is the animal feed. Okay, Darlene, I want to know more about the wild lettuce tea pills liquid. Let me go grab them. I um, Actually, Anna, I don't know if there's a link to it. I'm going to do a video actually over on my Farm to Table channel. It's one of the things uh, I'm actually going to get one out this week, and I'm going to have links to the stuff that I'm doing. So for those of you that don't know, I have lupus, and I've had horrible pain. Um, arthritis type pain, inflammation pain in all of my joints, all over my body for a year and a half. And I've been taking um, Tylenol and Aleve to try and get rid of that. And it used to work. It no longer works. It has not been working for about a year and a half. So I go on and off of not taking it, but um, and there are definitely people that have worse pain than I do, so I'm totally not complaining about it, but it's, it's painful. And uh, my doctor kind of kept chalking it up, well, age, 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 you know, you're 50 now, <laughs> you're not 20. Um, but this was different, and I was losing muscle tone. So I've also been having, I think I may be exercising in my sleep, because, and I think I'm doing push-ups or the plank. Because I wake up and my uh, biceps literally feel like I did a muscle failure day at the gym. So I ordered, I had looked up some stuff. What could I use instead of ibuprofen and um, Aleve and um, Tylenol for pain? And this wild lettuce tea came up. And I have a ton of wild lettuce that grows here. There are different ways that you can do it. I purchased the tea to see if it worked before I made the decision to take the time to harvest it and make my own wild teas. And I get a ton of it here. So, um, thanks, Angela. Bye, girl. Love you, too. Um, so, oh, Anna posted a link to some. So, I started taking it. What I'm noticing is it lasts for four hours. By the time I, so I use a pint glass. Um, and uh, you either want to have one of the loose leaf tea strainers and you can pull it out of that bag and put it in there and let it soak. But the tea bags that are in that, it floats. So you, I needed to push it down. So I actually pushed the bag down underneath the strainer and then I add some loose leaf tea, just some other stuff, flavor tea, um, for flavor to that. And I let it soak for 12 hours. So it soaks overnight for my morning drink. And then by the time I'm done drinking a half a pint, I have no pain in my body. Like it is, it's unbelievable. Like I honestly would not believe if somebody told me that that really was happening but this happens every time. And it basically lasts like every four hours. So every four hours. Um, I've just been doing morning and night. But I've decided to add a midday. Because right now like my wrists hurt. It's pretty much the only thing that's hurting right now. Is my wrists and my shoulders. Um, so I'm going to start seeping enough for all day. Um, but at least 24 hours. I didn't notice it working as well if I did less than 12 hours of seeping it. So I have not made up like a gallon of it to just have and just drink. Um, so maybe that's an option too. I, I do use warm water to start it seeping. I let it cool. I drink it cool. Um, so I, I have been shocked at how well it's used. So you can look and see if you have wild lettuce growing just wild in your yard, uh, which it does. It grows everywhere. It gets really tall. Um, 
So they used to, back in the day, use this wild lettuce for like surgeries and stuff, like before they had painkillers. And if you, I mean, it can almost be as like potent as opiates. If you, um, I don't know if you, I don't know if you just like <laughs> take the actual, so you know how when you cut it and the white sap comes out, that's, that's the part that, um, provides the pain relief. So when you dry it out, you just take it out, you dry it out just like you would an herb, and then you use it as a tea. That's, I think, the most mild way. You can also soak it in alcohol if you're, if you don't have an issue with alcohol, if you're not allergic, then um, you can make a tincture that way, and you can just do drops. I don't know how many. I'm not doing that. I am going to get the vegetable glycerin and make some that way so that I can try out that kind of tincture and see uh, the difference between the two. Right now, the tea's working fantastic. Um, I, I've been using the tea now, what, I guess it's been a week since I posted about the tea. And I had just gotten the tea in and I had just, that was the second day of using the tea. So I've been using the tea for a week and today, I really, truly felt like getting back to work. Like, I've, I've been in quite a bit of pain, so I have not felt like working. Um, so, uh, Anna posted a link. Like I said, I'm going to do a video over on my farm to table of all of the stuff that I'm trying and using. Um, I am doing the um, Rise Mushroom Coffee because the mushroom... Uh, coffee we decided it's more like a tea so um it um helps your gut so you want to heal your gut you want to heal your liver um even if you're um even if you have your liver tested and it's coming out normal and good if you have an autoimmune then you have an issue in your liver because you won't have an autoimmune if your liver is 100% healthy. That's what I've been reading. Ooh, dogs are carrying on. Um, it's going to be a little loud because the boys are upstairs. They're kind of playing. And it's really loud with the floor. Um, hey, Kelly, you made it. I'm glad you made it home. Doo -doo. What have I missed? I didn't know that you drove. Yeah, she drove the whole way. Um... Yeah, Bob, you need to friend us all on Facebook. <laughs> you, well, you're missing out on so much. Huh. Good beast or a monster? I'm missing stuff. Both. Okay, I missed the... What are we talking about? The good... I didn't know that you drove... KJ, I changed my mattresses and my shoulder pain and numbness in my hands virtually disappeared. So I was sleeping the other night and I was thinking that I totally need a sponsor for a mattress. <laughs> because I do think that that is part of the issue. I, I definitely think that is. Um, I was thinking that was what was happening with my shoulders. Why my shoulder? Because I'm a side sleeper. So I was thinking that that really was an issue with, with my shoulders. Uh, Colleen posted something. Burdock root is an is amazing for liver and more, and it grows wild on our property. Yeah, I need to get some of that. So I what I I guess what I've how I decided to approach this the lupus is I've completely changed my diet. So I've been doing carnivore diet um, for a couple of months now, basically since she told me that I have lupus. So I switched directly over to the carnivore diet. Um, and I was having awful acid reflux before that. And it took, I don't know, about a week for that to completely go away. And um, so that that's helping. That's getting rid. It's basically an, a, an elimination diet. So you're eliminating anything that can cause um, inflammation. And it gives your gut the opportunity to heal. So I think what I'm personally going to be doing basically from here on out is throughout the winter do a carnivore diet. Um, 
And then in when my garden's growing things, I'll be eating things out of my garden. I'll be trying things. You're not supposed to have any nightshades. That's another thing with lupus. I don't know if that's with all autoimmunes or just lupus, but that's... Hey, guys, that's super loud. Whatever you're doing. I feel like the ceiling's going to fall on me. <laughs> it's a little terrifying. <laughs> so... Um, so I started the carnivore diet, um, and then I started the mushroom tea, and then I've started the herbal stuff to get rid of inflammation. So that's that's what I'm slowly working into. I did um, one of my goat my goat sissy was never bred in the fall, so she's off trying to be get her pregnant um, because I was doing yogurt and um a little bit of cheese on the carnivore diet because it's still considered carnivore but it was causing horrible acid reflux so i had to quit that because i am actually um dairy intolerant that's why i have goats that's why i do goat milk so i did crunch the numbers and it in order for me to have yogurt and those things this year, I made the decision and I purchased a pregnant goat who's due to have babies at the end of this month. So I'll be able to get back into dairy. Um, I know, Colleen, no tomatoes. Now, I'm going to grow tomatoes anyway. And that's something that um, I'm, I'm going to grow those things anyway. And I'm going to do like some pasta sauce and stuff. And that way I can can it. And um, I don't really eat raw tomatoes anyway. Like that's never, never really been my thing. It, it actually has, I've always, I've had this very small intolerance to raw tomatoes my whole life. But tomato sauce is fine. And that's, I kind of do like a bowl, a little bit of tomato sauce, a hamburger patty, some cheese or whatever. And that's kind of how I eat my hamburgers. Because I don't really do ketchup and stuff. Um, hi, Mary. Glad you made it. Answered my question as I typed it. What are, what are we on Baby Watch? <laughs> um, so she's due by the end of this month. So around the 23rd, I think, is when she does. So about a week after Kira gets here. Kira gets here on the 17th. And so about a week later, we should be having babies. Which is really exciting. She has... She's already trained... Um, to be hand milked or machine milked and she's this is her second time having babies and she herself was a bottle fed baby she's so sweet and it's so funny how things work out so I'm gonna tell you this story so you know Kelly's our finder of things like if we need something we just say hey Kelly I'm looking for blah 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 and she finds it for us and finds a great deal so I had told her I was talking about it I had sent my other go sissy off to be bred um, by a kinko goat and sissy has never gotten has never been bred before so this even though she's an older goat she's never gotten bred so i um uh <laughs> and i'm offended there were no babies when i got there exactly you must return to see the babies so i there is a breed of goat that i've always wanted i started milking goats in 2006 and i've always wanted a Sonnen goat and they're a dairy breed they're very quiet they're very sweet they're all white their ears they kind of have like their ears are probably five inches long and they stick straight out um, but they're they're no they are big milk production goats they usually bare minimum um, produce a gallon of milk a day so they're fantastic for smaller farms but um, and they're a quiet goat, so that's a big deal. And if you've been around goats, they scream at you constantly. And she's so quiet. She's so sweet. Um, so I had told Kelly, hey, I'm looking for a goat that's due to have babies or is already in milk or whatever for sale. And so, you know, let me know if you find anything. So 20 minutes later, she calls me and says, hey, and I didn't tell her anything about the breed. I didn't tell her anything. It was just like, what's there? And I'm like, if this is the goat that I'm supposed to buy, then it'll be the right goat and it'll tick off all these boxes. So she calls me and she's like, um, 
Okay, so I have a friend who's got a friend that has this goat. This lady runs a dairy, and um, it's it's a, a, a Sonnen cross. So it's a Sonnen cross with a kinder. And then she had another one that I, I, I don't know if it was a La Mancha or whatever. And I was like, oh, like, how much is she? And so then she told me that was a little over what I wanted to spend. Um, but it is very much in line with what dairy goats, um, bread dairy goat runs for here. So in this area, especially a, a very well taken care of dairy goat. Hey, um, Brenda, look, it's my, my, my mug you gave me. Um, so it, she literally ticked all the boxes. And so then I just went down and I started adding up what I'm spending right now on dairy at the grocery store. So I basically drink a gallon of milk a week in my with my coffee, coffee creamer. And then I, if I could be without it giving me acid reflux, I would be eating about a half a gallon of yogurt a week and some mozzarella. So like take a gallon of milk and make mozzarella. Um, and I ended up figuring it out that with feeding year round feed, year round hay and some grain and also feeding out her babies, if she had twins or triplets, feeding them out also for the season, I was still going to save $560 a year having the goat versus not having the goat. And that doesn't even count cottage cheese, feta, ricotta, um, any of the other extra stuff. Ice cream doesn't count any of that. So if I counted those things, um, I would have even way more than that. But I included all the feed. I included raising her babies. I included, so her babies will go to freezer camp. And I even counted like, the approximate amount if she had twins. So if she has triplets, then it would be even more savings versus, um, you know, less. And I, everything was on either the high side of what it would cost and the low side of production. So, um, I will save more than $560 a month. Uh, I'm sorry, a year off of her. So it, um, it's not as bad as chicken math. Um, and so that being said, if Sissy gets pregnant, which she, I had taken her just as she was going out of heat. So it was every 28 days they go into season. So she's going to be bred here in the next couple of weeks and we'll see what she gets. So that'll just give us more. I just, I needed a guarantee on production. That's what I needed. And I also, my one goat Darla she didn't make it through the winter and so this was kind of replacing her um i was i i'm on the fence of keeping her daughter because i think she had weak genetics um <clears throat> she did not bounce back very well from giving birth and i had already wormed her like twice and like sissy i've never had to worm sissy ever the entire time i've had her she so i breed for survival of the fittest and the best genetics, and then those are what I want to keep and continue on my line. So, um, I'm I'm on the fence with that right now. So we'll see if I keep the third one. I really, I feel like two goats would be in way more than enough for me. <clears throat> Bob's still dealing with the rat in his chicken coop. Um, some goats are better with parasites, but it has all to do with, so here's what's happened in general. Back in the day, they did not keep low thriving animals in their breeding program. Those were the animals that were cold, sold off, um, put in the freezer, any of those kinds of things. Um, they only kept their healthiest animals to be breeders. I think that's moved away from now. I think there's this philosophy of 
<clears throat> regardless of what you have to do to get that animal breedable ready, I'm going to breed it anyway. And if I'm having to worm a goat multiple times a year, once a year is not a big deal. Like that's totally fine. We're going to have rain season here. It's really normal when you're in a wet, soggy season to have to um, worm them. That's very typical. But to have to worm them like, okay, I've given birth. They have to be wormed. Oh, all of a sudden they look skinny and thin and you've got to worm them. And then they, you know, it's, it's coming into winter, you better worm them. Coming out of winter, you better worm them. That's an issue with the animal. So, and I shouldn't have to do a whole bunch of extra stuff in order for that animal. So that's genetics. They genetically have a weaker immune system and their body's not battling the worms to the point that they can because they have worms in their system all the time it's just whether or not they can thrive and the their body won't let the worms take over is the issue so and sissy's one of those her and bud both were one of those that were just super super healthy um and the thing is is when you have goats that are like sissy um you can do all the herbal stuff with them and it works beautifully and they thrive and you never have an issue and you never have a problem. And, um, you know, this, you just continue to breed healthier and healthier and easier to manage animals. Um, if you, um, uh, Brenda, Dee Dee is the new goat that I bought. So that's her name. <laughs> her name is Dee Dee. They named her, um, I think it was Deanna. Um, it was off of, um, a, uh, one, one of the um, reality shows, and I don't watch a lot of those, so I don't really know which one it was, so I couldn't really remember. But he called her Dee Dee, so I started calling her Dee Dee. Um, the other way, you guys are actually talking about rotating, and I know you're talking about chickens, but that's also another way to help the worming cycle is to move them from pasture rotational grazing. And then you also don't, you break the cycle of the thing, but... You guys know what I have going on here. It's a hot mess. And if I have an animal that's going to thrive in this situation, then they're just going to do so much better when they're set up to be very, very successful. So part of the issue is you don't have safe pasture. Yeah, the area you have is where the worms are in their mature. So that increases worm worming requirements, except I have not had to worm Cece at all. She is thriving. She is, her weight is, in fact, her weight is almost chubby. Like she's been the bully with the food. So she takes everybody's food. In fact, when she gets back, I'm going to tie her up when it's feeding time. And then I now have where they can freely, they have free feed hay. Um, but if she has like the best immune system and she is half La Mancha, half boar goat, boar goats are considered a meat goat. But they also are very high production in milk. They also will produce like a gallon of milk a day. So she should, same with La Mancha, so she should produce a really uh, quantity of milk. So um, the Dee Dee is Son and Kender cross. The Kender goat is a cross between your Nigerian dwarfs and your Nubian. And so that has a very high fat content in the milk, which is great for cheese making. So it, it's going to be super interesting to see. I am going to get a cream separator. Viver actually has a cream separator that I want to get and try out. Um, uh, did I say CC? Sissy. I said sissy. Maybe I didn't say sissy. Maybe I said Cece. And now we have Dee Dee and Cece. <laughs> hmm. So, I mean, I am going to, I am going to, so worming is not expensive. Um, I purchased some ivermectin. That's what we worm with. Unless you have a specific worm that needs something else, that's your general. And so it's not super expensive. Um, but... When you worm them, you don't want to drink their milk and you don't want to eat the meat. You have to wait. There's a waiting period on that. So, Hi, Mountain Beaches. How are you? It's good to see you. Are you guys back? <laughs> are you back? Because I know you, you went, uh, did you go to Arizona? 
I saw your video and you were down there, so I don't know if, um, yeah, it's not organic. It's not an organic wormer. You have to, um, you definitely have to wait out the time for it to get through the system. I think with butchering, it's like 28 days and I'm, I would assume it's the same with milking. So not back yet. Still enjoying that beautiful. So it's been gray and cloudy, but we will be 67 degrees. I think it was on next Thursday. It's going to be really warm. Um, so, and I'm going to go back to the herbs um, and spices for them, for the goats, get them a warming tincture going up or tea. They'll eat the, they'll eat the, um, the herbs. So you just throw it in their grain bucket. Ivermectin has totally been used for all kinds of things. And luckily they're still selling it to us as for our animals. Cause I was worried about that. There was also in Washington, there was a, um, a specific worm that was transferred with the deer. And I don't remember what worm it is, but you had to have a specific wormer for that worm. And you had four days from the time you saw them getting a little bit sick, you had four days before they died. Like it would hit, take over, and your animal would be dead. It was horrible. So it was like you kept that wormer on hand. So like those specific things like that, obviously you'd have the wormer on hand. Um, I don't think that's a, oh, that worm is an issue here. Um, but it was, I think they said it was the deer that was, was bringing it through there. Certified organic means somebody paid for the certification. <laughs> huh. Helped Virgil and I when you get, yeah, um, I've totally taken Ivermectrin, Colleen. It definitely helped. Someone was posting they were an organic farmer and hired someone to build a barn. They couldn't use treated or kiln drying wood for it, or they would use the cert. I don't understand the kiln drying wood because that kiln drying just means that you're creating a hot box for it to dry faster. It's not a chemical. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, I could, I could understand treated. Treated is, there's tons of chemical in the treated. I always worry when people use treated lumber. Hi, Bradley. Treated lumber in their garden beds because then you're definitely leaching the chemicals into um, Tiffany. Member for 11 months. Thanks, girl. Darlene said pumpkin is a natural one. I do feed pumpkin. So th that would be the warming that I do. I will throw pumpkin. Sissy has had that. She has had pumpkin. So I have thrown pumpkin in with the seeds um, throughout the years that, that I've had her. Like uh, uh, when they have October, when they have all the pumpkins for sale, I will buy three or four of those and chunk them out. This year I'm going to grow some for this winter for them. So that definitely... Um, uh, I don't agree, Robert. I've been using pumpkin for years and I have animals that I absolutely knew that they had worms, gave them the pumpkin. They need to eat the seeds. It's not just the actual pumpkin. It's the pumpkin and the pumpkin seeds. Um, and that will worm them. And I did a pre-test and an after test. So, and there was a difference in the, um, the worm load on in them. Um, <laughs> KJ for 14 months. You guys are awesome. I just so appreciate you guys supporting me. You don't even understand. This winter has been really hard. Um, I, I, we say that every winter, don't we? I eat pumpkin seeds. <laughs> you shouldn't have worms then, <laughs> Anna. <laughs> I love pumpkin seeds. Those are my favorite. Can you guys hear them? They're up there partying. Hey, Avery Acres. Hello. How often do you give them the pumpkins to keep the worms at bay? Um, so I give it to them in October. So when they have, when pumpkins would normally come in into season and be ripe, that's whenever I give them. Um, I'm real big on, um, God knows he has a plan. 
and he's going to provide what needs to be taken when it needs to be taken. So that's when I've always looked at giving pumpkins. Hey, boys, settle down. Um, so that's whenever I will give pumpkins is when they are actually going to be ripe. I don't, I don't do it off season. I love pumpkin seeds. Those are like my favorites. Um, I, I auto corrected <laughs> for you. Worms, not rooms. <laughs> Can I eat it if it grows from me? Wait. That pumpkin is growing in you. <laughs> Sprouted pumpkin. I have not done this. I have not done sprout. My mom did sprout. Hey. That's not okay. I don't care. It's still not okay. You almost pummeled grandma. <laughs> um, the giggles are cute. So my mom was really big into sprouts. So we always had sprouts go growing, growing up, growing. We always had sprouts growing, growing up. <laughs> so that one got me. Um, I love sprouts and I don't know why I stopped eating them. I think I'm going to do, I'll probably do sprouts this year. Get back onto sprouts because they're so healthy. And I really want to get off anything from the middleman. So all of my vitamins and supplements and nutri nutrients, that particular, I want to, how do I get that? Has anybody looked into the, the beef organs where they're, they're now really talking about how we should be eating the organs and they're selling, um, uh, a vitamin for those. Has anybody, um, looked into those. I just started looking into those. So because I'm on estrogen, so I'm trying to find stuff to replace the estrogen and they're saying that's one of the ways to do it. Bob, why are you all talking about hens? <laughs> Bean sprouts and my grandkids said they were worms. <laughs> I didn't realize that if you sprouted your baked beans before you ate them, that it would affect your stomach less. I have to give the stink eye. You guys need to stop that. Jeffrey, stop. I think not let me pick a show. Mm -mm. No, sir. So I, I didn't realize that either. So not all of us have goats. <laughs> You don't see them in the stores anymore. I looked for liver and couldn't find any. Interesting. I see the chicken stuff. I see the chicken livers, the chicken hearts. Um, I do give those to my dogs. And I am, so I have a lamb that I've, I'm going to be processing here pretty soon. And I am going to keep the liver and the organs and we'll see um, whether I just make dog treats with them or if <laughs> I do something different with that. But yeah, you don't, um, I guess I haven't paid as much attention. The quail are doing good. So I've got, I've, I've got a, actually a tote full of quail, like right here. Um, and then I have another, the other tote with the smaller quail that are finishing feathering out. So, um, uh, I, I've been waiting on Viver to send me the chicken run. It's, it's, um, a night to 20, 10 by 20 chicken pin, covered chicken pin. And then I've this behind me, these boxes are, um, window screens, like a big roll of screen to put on the side so that they can't get out. Uh, but they haven't gotten that yet. So I'm going to end up building a bigger cage for them, moving them to that. And then I'll be able to move them into the um, bigger run. Mm -hmm. um, uh, your chickens love them as treats. Love lamb fry. Grew up on a farm. I'm going to make quite a bit of gyro meat because that's my favorite favorite in lamb. I love a uh, leg of lamb on the rotisserie. Um, 
but I and lamb kebabs. I've done the lamb kebabs, but my favorite is the gyro meat. Um, it's so good. <laughs> um, I'm definitely going to be posting that stuff over on the other channel. Things like the the um, quail yard and all of that kind of stuff. There will be because it'll Viver sponsors this channel, so the putting it up will be on this channel, but then I'll do more walkthroughs and stuff. The one cool thing that I like about quail, there's a lot of things I like about quail, but quail do not roost up high. And so like, they don't like to get up high. So you can actually have a bench in there and you can go in and sit. They stay on the ground. So as long as you give them things to hide in and to, they'll be super happy. And so you can actually have a bench in there and sit in there and drink your coffee or your tea while you're listening to your birds because they won't poop all over your bench seat like chickens will. <laughs> chickens are like, yeah, I get to get up high. That They like to roost. All the meat, but the sword of meat sliced at the dinner table, best of all. Okay, Bob, did, did, you, did you say all of that right? Are you talking about where they stack it up on the thing and then you slice it? So you, you cut it into really thin slices and you, you skewer it on that stand and you pack it all together and then you cook it that way. Is that what you're talking about? Because that looks really good. Ooh, thanks, Tiffany. Um, oh, yeah, that is good. I've had that. That's really good. I'll probably like set aside some roasts, some big cuts of meat to do that that with because that just looks fantastic and so when i do my gyro meat i actually when i free because i freeze it so when i freeze it i cut it into chunks and then i put all of the herbs in with that and i freeze it so then when i'm thawing it out in the refrigerator it's marinating the whole time and then i'll add the oils to it and then i puree it all up together and oh, now we're on to food. <laughs> then fry it in butter. <laughs> Sign you up. Yeah, Kelly, you're totally. Absolutely, girl. Absolutely. Um, I am feeling better, so that's good. And like I said, today I felt like I felt like working. I, I've been cleaning up, and um, when Kim Kim came and got the rest of her stuff. And she had a bunch of stuff in the truck. You guys all know that. We basically live in our vehicles out here. So there's like two big tubs of stuff that was in the truck. And um, so I've got to organize that room. Kira gets here on the 17th. So I, I, I was debating on just having her share room with me until I could get that room completely finished. All of the siding on the walls and all of that completely finished quail we're chatting um but i've now pretty much think i've decided that i don't want to share my space <laughs> which i don't think anybody can blame me <laughs> bob gotta go see everyone soon neighbor's dog going crazy and there have been issues uh oh get him bob good luck Let's get Anna back in the game. <laughs> Do you guys like my chopstick stir stick? <laughs> That's what I stir my, my mushroom coffee with. <laughs> I do need a space. Um, I do need a space. And I've really been thinking about how I want to set that up and organize it and do all of those things because the kitchen literally is the hardest room. So once the kitchen is finished, then you have the bathroom, which is a really difficult room, but it's, I don't think it's as hard. I don't think it's as hard as the kitchen. I think the kitchen is the hardest. And my tea wand. Oh, Anna, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> um, uh, I'd leave that for the winter and press with other things that affect your quality of life more. I, come, I agree. I agree, KJ. Uh, my dogs are quiet and in bed. Uh, Euro-style steak tacos for supper tonight. Oh, yum, Tiffany. Uh, yum. I know. I, I think Anna should be making her, um, keto meals. 
All those cooking videos would be so good. Uh, and we were going to use Kira's cabin. And this was per Kira. Like, she wants to be inside here. She does not want to be out in her cabin. Mm -hmm. She just, she, um, uh, she likes to be very close to me when she's here. So, for those of you that don't know, she's autistic. That's just her thing. So, she likes to be super close. So, she does have her cat coming. So, we're going to have to, she has got a new kitten and um, it's obviously not allowed to go outside, so we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do there because the um, the doggy door and such. So I've got to figure all of that out this week and then be ready for her on the 17th. But um, So we'll be using Kira's cabin for extra storage, extra things, all of that. Um, Right now, I'm actually pulling, I bought totes and I'm pulling everything out of the kitchen because that's another thing that has really slowed me down is having to clean a space and then work in that space and then put everything back because I'm living in here. I totally do not recommend living in your build unless it's like the basement and you're building up top and you're not doing anything, you know, you're not in the middle of it. This has been horrible. Uh... Brenda, you had eggs tonight. Need to start making videos again. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> Meals and your farm chores. Your chicken videos. It's totally great. I'm actually really excited about throwing new videos on the other channel because I get to video things that I really love doing all the time, which is the homesteading side of this entire journey. I like building. I enjoy building. I'm definitely burned out. Um, I'm ready to have a finished space. You guys are so right. Whenever you say that, finish your space and then go to the next thing. It's so hard when our building season is so short and you want to be like, okay, I can go work on the shop. So I'm going to go do that. Um, that's the mistake I made when I moved here, moving in boxes everywhere and having no room to work. Having to move stuff to work or get in anything, it made a lot. It's KJ so much harder, so much harder, and I'm definitely ready for it to be done. So I'm going to pull everything out, and I'll have a couple of things at hand. It's one thing about doing the carnivore diet. It's really easy to cook. Like, you don't have, you don't have, like, a lot of things that you need for cooking, um, and... Do, do. Wait, research carnivore diet. Oh dear design. Hi, oh dear design. Um, I have. Are you telling me to research it, or are you telling you to research it? I've done quite a bit of research. Mm -hmm. This is also what my doctor um, recommended. There's a couple of other ladies in her office that have lupus. This is what they're on. Um, like I said earlier, I'm going to do carnivore in the off season, so winter time. And I'm going to eat what I grow. So I am going to grow nightshades even though I'm not supposed to eat them. But if I s see a problem with them, if anything gives me work inflammation, then I'm not going to eat it. It'll be chalked off. So I'm going to grow all the things this year. And I'm going to start making my list of what I can and cannot eat. Um, possibly. The one thing that I would have to say is I have not lost weight on this carnivore diet. Not at all. That is very frustrating. That's also a part of lupus. So I'm hoping that it will catch up to itself. It'll My body will start healing and it'll start working. So it's just no fun. Oh, good. Oh, dear design. Yes. So yeah, um, you're doing it and it's helped you a lot. Awesome. <laughs> it is rude, Anna. It's rude that I've not lost any weight. So that's no fun. I'll, uh, Kelly, so I'll take any tomatoes you cannot eat and I'll make salsa and spaghetti sauce. <laughs> Deal. So I am going to make some spaghetti sauce and definitely put it aside because if I can't eat it, I know Victor can and his family. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm growing all the things. I'm totally growing all the things. <laughs> um, Kelly's got me covered. <laughs> There'd be no waste here. I am. So um, I'm working over in the garden area. When Kira gets here, that's what we're going to be doing straight out the gate. 
And if I can get an area set up for pigs, I will probably raise a couple of pigs this summer so extra stuff can go to them. Um, but I'm really thinking about raising pigs through the winter. So um, Vicki says, not losing weight is a symptom of autoimmune. So when I told my doctor that, I've been doing keto and I've been really, really good. Like I have not had cheat days and I am not losing weight and that's not normal. That's when she looked at all of my stuff and was like, oh, well, you tested for the for lupus and you have the butterfly rash on your face um, and you have the all of these other things. So, yeah, you have quite a few lupus symptoms. That's when she connected the dots <laughs> to it and decided to look because I apparently the nurses were supposed to call me and talk to me about the, she thought I already knew she thought I had already been told that I tested positive for lupus. So, um, rashes shouldn't be named cute things, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> and I said, so what's the solution? I would say healing your gut, healing your liver because you can cure autoimmune from what the research that I've been doing, you guys, not a doctor beginning my journey. <laughs> so I'm sure other people have d tried all kinds of things and it hasn't worked. I think you have to find what works for you. But from what I'm reading, you heal the liver, you heal your gut, you get rid of your inflammation. You don't eat anything that brings more inflammation in and you will cure your autoimmune. Oh, thanks, Colleen. Colleen said that I look healthier and not as tired. Thank you, because I'm actually really tired right now. <laughs> I'm totally ready to go to bed at like four. <laughs> we have two pigs, John Ham and Kevin Bacon. They go to freezer camp in July. <laughs> Doctors just give you more meds that mess your gut up more. Um, so I have an ongoing thing and I'm really sad because this doctor of mine is, she's no longer in the office. She's switched over, but she knows that I won't take things. I've already told her, well, I, you can give it to me, but I'm not going to take it until I try this other stuff. Like I'm going to try the most holistic way to heal it before I try something that is going to cause more problems. It has side effects. So. Um, I know I'm going to be doing some comfrey tea. Comfrey tea heals a lot of things. Um, <laughs> Anna, Heather should share her pretty hair picture she took yesterday. Uh, yeah, I went and showered and actually blow dried and styled my hair. This is leftover. I slept on it. This is leftover hair. Um, I didn't, I didn't put any product in, so it's just like, um, and I sent. I sent our group a picture. <laughs> the glamour shot. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. <laughs> yeah, Carol, my doctor's like, okay, I know you're going to go do your research and do your stuff and follow your things. I really love it because I'll, like, I told her, I told her about um, the Comfrey Salve. I told her about uh, magnesium, the lack of magnesium. Because I, I said, I'm going to start adding magnesium because I, I know I'm, I know I'm low in it. And she's like, uh, we didn't test you for that. And I said, no, but everybody's low in magnesium. Like that's a known thing here in the United States or all over the world that everybody's low in magnesium, which is why I'm going to milk my sheep because sheep, sheep's milk has magnesium and zinc in it. And you have to have the two in order for it to work. Um, and that was last winter when I started my magnesium and zinc. I started feeling way better pretty pretty quickly. It's always good to take fun picture fun times too. Yeah. And then I hung out with Beth. Um, we went met for coffee and we chatted for five hours. And I wasn't even holding her hostage. Like she was there voluntarily. <laughs> we just caught up on all the things uh so our um what is it our home in the woods our i think it's our home in the woods i can't remember the name of their channel um the sheep will be bred <laughs> anna what other chatted for five hours shock oh. awe <laughs> huh. 
Generation X retirement homes are our malls. Everything is there. Movies, food court, glamorous. Those are really, okay. Those are really cool. I personally wouldn't want to live in them because I feel like they could mm -hmm. shut you down at any moment and control absolutely everything. Um, hey, boys, your mom should be back by now if you want to run over to your house. Huh? <laughs> your mom should be home by now if you want to put your shoes on and get your stuff and run home. Um, our dream in the woods. Thanks, Kelly. Um, they're, they're finishing up their milling and I'm really excited to see their build this, this summer. They're, they're going to get it. They're going to get it done. They're off. They are so awesome. She's, she's so lovely. He's really sweet also too. Huh? Okay. Nothing. Um, say bye boys. Uh, there you are. <laughs> huh? Uh, she knows that you're coming because I messaged her before we started the live. Yeah. So, remember under the chair. In the corner. We shoved them all under there. No. Uh, so far behind on their videos, I feel bad. They are so nice. I, I do like the content. I'm behind on their content also, by the way. Oh, what's your shoes doing under there? They're in a hard spot. So now I have to figure out what to do with these giant tiles. Um, I just had them out. I took them out of the box. So I don't have the box. I am going to try to return them. But, um, but I don't have the box for them so i am going to see if they'll let me take return them if they don't let me return them because i don't have the box and it's been a little bit of time um then i have to figure out what to do with them bye avery acres <laughs> my chauffeur job is early in the morning i'm behind on everything also you didn't leave it in the truck did you i found it Oh, watch the birds. I have you guys listened to quail. I love now when they're just chirping, it's not a big deal, but they'll start cooing at each other, and it is so sweet. Um, can you use the tiles in the bathroom? So I don't know because they're really, really big tiles. And did you take it upstairs? You have a tendency to do that. You're going to have to use your eyeballs. You're going to have to move things, like move Grandma's jacket. See if it's underneath there on top of the chair. There's a backpack. There's a backpack. Get the backpack. Even the baby one in the dad. Any toys left behind from McDonald's Happy Meals are going to be thrown away. We, we were bad today. Didn't shoot the neighbor or his dogs. Hey, I'm going to tell you, the paintball gun works really well. Works really well. We're talking about quail and unused large tiles. Yes, that's what we're talking about. So, I have a corner shower that has, um, you know, the, the it has the walls that come with it and it has the tray. So, it's a corner it's a corner shower for that. Um, so that's what I have for the shower. And then there's very small amount of room for the sink and then the toilet in that square. Um, so I don't think I'm going to be able to use it on the floor because you, I have that corner piece for the shower. Um, not going to need it on the walls. I would have to buy more if I was using it on the walls. So there's that. Um, I'm really hoping that they'll let me return it. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that that's, that's, uh, finally made it. Rain was super crazy and I had to check on my animals. Simple living, the urban hippie chick. I'm glad you made it. We're actually, I think we're just kind of running over and now we're just chatting. <laughs> I mean, we've been chatting the whole time, but <laughs> Carla Thompson, love listening to the grandkids. Reminds me of what we go through when we get ready to go home. Yeah. <laughs> Want me to sing the ladder song? No! Here he comes just a climbing down the ladder singing. <laughs> Sing it. Do you want diddy diddy dum diddy? They're like, no. <laughs> we don't want to do it. 
<laughs> Virgil had a tile saw. Colleen, do you guys need giant marble looking tiles? <laughs> Don't do what Bob said. What did Bob say? Put the tiles on the ceiling. <laughs> no. All right, you guys, you got all your stuff? This bottle. Oh, thank you, sir. Don't drop it. Just yeah. Love you to pieces. See you later, gators. Why is this in here? That's for your dad. It's messy? Uh -huh. No, it's a drink. Love you, pumpkin face. I love you. Why is sticks <laughs> in there? Because those are cinnamon sticks to flavor it. Here. I have to tell you guys. Let me let me see this really fast. I want to show everybody. Just real quick. Hand it to me. Make me stretch. Okay, see that? Now I'm going to tell you the story. Okay, take that to your dad. Thank you. So, we were shopping. And I was talking to a gentleman in the store. And I was sniffing candles. <laughs> and I wasn't actually paying it. Because the guy's family breeds corgis. So, we were talking about corgis. So, I'm looking at him. I'm not paying attention. I'm picking up things. I'm smelling them. Because there's all these candles. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. And I turn around and I grab that jar and it has a lid on it, a twisty lid, which some of these candles did. And I twisted the lid and it popped because it was a sealed thing. And I was like, no, it's not a candle. And now I have to buy it. <laughs> that jar, which is you add alcohol to it, you add bourbon or whiskey and it flavors it and you let it. You let it seat, you let it sit, you know, on the shelf or whatever, and then you have flavored liquor, which we know I don't drink. So I'm like, and the guy's like, oh, it'll be, it's great. You just add, it was $30 for that. Like that was 30 bucks and I'm not even going to use it. So I was like, I told my son, I, I got you a present. He doesn't drink very often, but he'll use it, whatever. <laughs> So just like, geez, that's what I get for not paying attention. <laughs> See, Anna, the, the candle that Anna got had a mason jar lid on it too. And I was like, literally when I did it, I, my face was like, oh, no. And then I'm looking at it and I'm like, no, this isn't even something I would buy. Like, <laughs> I felt bad and I bought it anyway. He told me I didn't have to, but it was sealed and I felt like I should. <laughs> Yeah, so we all left the man cave, I think it was called. <laughs> hmm. I think you can make tea. I could probably make tea with it, but for the $5 worth of herbs that were in there and dried um, orange peels <laughs> and cinnamon sticks, and I mean, I would even say less than $5 worth of stuff in it. I'll just give it to Victor. I have the TV on watching you, and you grabbed the phone so I could comment. The TV is way ahead of the phone stream. Weird. Isn't that weird? So I have my computer on right now because then I can I can read the comments, and it's a little bit behind. And I also realize how much I use my hands <laughs> because I see it out of my peripheral, and I can see me flailing like that. <laughs> it was supposed to have cherries, but it's missing. Hi, Jean. I'm glad you made it. Same as simple living. What I miss, Kelly? What's same as simple living? <laughs> Kelly, should have seen her face. It was classic. I know. I was like, no. Now I have to. <laughs> Heather learned not to play with things in the store. Yeah. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying now. And uh, Kelly, I see what you're saying now. So, yeah. <laughs> I was like, the whole rest of the day, I'm like, I have this stupid jar that I'm not going to do anything with that cost $30. <laughs> At least the guy was nice and they breed corgis. <laughs> like, stupid. <clears throat> I am also finding... For those of you that have kind of followed, and I've always said that I don't sleep well, being on the carnivore's diet and this mushroom tea, but I, I would say definitely the carnivore diet, 
I sleep so good. It's really pretty cool. To be fair, you were talking about dogs. That Exactly, Anna. He distracted me with corgis. <laughs> the promise of corgi babies. <laughs> I'm just like, and I'm going to smell this too. Ah! <laughs> we do think he was married. There were comments that, that made it feel like he was married. He's a very handsome young man. I say young. I think he was probably like... 37, 38. So, yeah, young. But I am very excited about the countertop thing is, is done. And the, both the boys love it. They said it was really cool. And I just got to do a little bit more to finish the edge. I've, I think I have a iron in my um, RV. I did have an iron in my RV, so I'm going to see if it's still in there. Because I have, I bought the edging on the sides that you iron on. But if I don't have it, then I'll probably just finish up today's video with where I'm at right now, where I stopped at. It won't be a full finished video, but I don't think you guys mind, right? <laughs> the kitchen is going to be a huge game changer once it's finished. And I know once I get everything out of there and I don't feel like I have to play the transfer game in order to work. And I had gotten this whole area cleaned and then Kim brought these big totes in with all the stuff from the truck. And now I'm like, I don't even know what to do with that stuff right now. So it's just kind of sitting there. Um, it, would be, it would be stuff that I would take out to the tool shed, but I don't have the tool shed. So now my workspace has these two giant totes and Kira's coming so I can't really put them back there in that room and I definitely can't get them upstairs they're super heavy I can bring you one on the way up to cabin Thursday if you don't okay Kelly I'll double check and then I'll let you know because that'd be super helpful but I'm not keeping it you'll have to pick it back up on Sunday when you go back home <laughs> hmm I just watched your video, Simple Living. I watched your video, Burrito in a Jar. Loved it. What? A burrito in a jar? That sounds amazing. Nancy said, I wouldn't survive on a carnivore diet because I don't like meat. Well, that would that would be an issue. The funny thing is, is so at first I was like, I could have steak every day because that's what... Um, the people that I was reading, they had steak every day. And Kelly had mentioned that a friend of hers that has lupus can't eat red meat. And I was like, well, I'm going to eat red meat until I real till my body says, no, you can't have that. And my acid reflux would not go away. And so uh, then I basically started eating chicken wings. So pretty much for the last, since February, I've been eating chicken wings every day. This is why I'm like, how am I not losing weight? Because I definitely, and I drink two of these uh, mushroom coffees with, um, now I have whole milk. Anna bought me some, got brought me a gift um, of some hazelnut um, coffee creamer that's just the syrup, hazelnut syrup. Um, sure, and it's a sugar-free one that does not have an aftertaste. Um, and so now I have whole milk with that and it's really good. Um, oh, did you put up? Oh, thanks for putting up her, throwing up her link. I'm gonna go check out that video too. Oh, chalk zero hazelnut syrup. Thanks. And so otherwise I was buying coffee creamer and half and half and I would mix the two and that would give me my creamer. So I do two of those a day. And then the chicken wings, there's no reason why I'm not losing weight other than I have autoimmune disease and it won't let me, which is rude. Except the wings Chloe ate. Yeah. Oh, you guys, it was so funny. So I left my bowl of wings here and I had eaten almost all of them. There was like three left in there, but I take the bones and I make bone broth and then I drink the bone broth. So that's the other thing that I've been doing on a regular basis. And I 
got up and went into the kitchen or did something, came back, and Chloe had jumped on my chair and eaten the the entire bowl. So all the bones, all the chickens, all the stuff. She knows how to chew her food, so I'm not real worried about her um, because she's done the raw meat diet before. So she chews it. I'm not worried about that. But um, she would not look at me. I'm like, oh, did you eat my wings? So there's another time when she was young that she did that to a sandwich in the car when I got out to pump gas and she ate my sandwich. And then she literally like shoved her nose on the floor in the car, like up underneath the um, glove box where you could, I couldn't see her face. And so I brought up the sandwich and I like, she would not <laughs> look at me. It was like, if I don't make eye contact, then I'm not in trouble. <laughs> hmm. Homemade coffee creamer is much better than the store brand. So I agree with you, except for the, the syrups left an aftertaste that I really did not like. And the sugar-free stuff, because that's, I'm trying to not have white sugar in my diet. Um, so this one does not leave an aftertaste. So I really, really like it. This Chalk Zero. Um, <laughs> Anna, if I ate your bowl of wings, I would absolutely not look at you. <laughs> she knows she did me wrong. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> well, you shouldn't have left them unsupervised. I tell people that all the time. Man, you can leave a million dollars sitting right next to me, and you it will be here when you get back. Leave some M&Ms or something. <laughs> I'm totally taking it. <laughs> it's monk fruit. Okay. I There's no aftertaste to it, and I love it. So it's been, it's been totally fantastic. I will definitely keep that um, in my thing because... Right now, I'm all about the hazelnut. I did order some hazelnut trees, bushes, whatever they are. Um, I think they are considered trees, even though they look like a hedge. Um, so I'm going to be planting those. They grow here. Hooked on Southern Butter Pecan Coffee Creamer. I was for a while. That was one that I really liked, too. Um, yeah, Jink, uh, Kira's going to be here on the 17th this month. So, yeah, I'm really excited for her to get back. Oh, your brother has hazelnuts in his yard, too. Nice. Because he's in Oregon, right? The There was a friend of a friend who had a row of, like, 10-foot row of um, hazelnut um, trees. And she's like, I don't need any more. She's like, I have so many. If you want to come pick, you can. You can come have all the, all the nuts. And we sat, and I probably filled up well okay so it's this huge tub I would say it's a 20 gallon tub I we filled that up with hazelnuts and I took that home and then I made like a bunch of hazelnut spread and I froze a bunch I and um I made uh the Nutella the homemade Nutella um that was basically my peanut butter forever and I, I'm thinking the hazelnuts have a high magnesium and zinc in them also. Someone look that up because I think that's, I think that's why it was a nut that I know that I could grow here. Peanuts is something that I think I can grow here too. I may try to grow some peanuts. Um, but I love hazelnuts. Love them. That's like one of my go-tos. Nancy, I'm really glad she's coming back too. She's such a good girly. Um. Yeah, it was from just this hedge, like just this. So if you are planting a hedge anywhere, like if you need a little privacy screen to something, literally get hazelnut trees and plant those because they produce, I think it's year three. And I purchased from the Arbor Day Foundation and they are two year starts. So they come from, a, it's, it's a two year old growth. So... I'll plant them this year. Next year, I should have hazelnuts. Love hazelnuts. Biggest producer was in Oregon. Pick some up when we go back to Oregon for our two younger boys' weddings this summer. Oh, nice, Colleen. That's awesome. Yeah, I had those hazelnuts. She's not wrong. Like, I had those hazelnuts for two years, and I would say I ate hazelnut a lot. I do want to see if I can make a hazelnut extract out of them without it being alcohol. 
So I'll get that vegetable glycerin and try that. Um, because I would love to make my own hazelnut. I do have the um, almond milk thing where you can make, I could make hazelnut milk, but I don't think it would taste the same. If that makes sense. Tied, tied with walnuts, hazelnuts also pro provide 11% of your RDA for magnesium. Yeah, that was okay. They deliver around 10% of your vitamin B6, a nutrient that's important for keeping the immune system. Yeah, that's that was why I was like, when I was looking up things, I started just, one, I loved hazelnuts. So I already knew I was doing hazelnuts. But then whenever mm -hmm. I looked them up, um, it was like, okay, this is another thing for magnesium and vitamin B, um, 11% of the RDA for it, like 11%, that's a good amount. So between the hazelnuts, the sheep's milk, um, there were some other things. I'm allergic to walnuts, so I can't. And it was, I was watching this thing and they were talking about if you're deficient and you're craving sugar, you should eat walnuts because you're deficient in the thing that's in walnuts. Was it tryptophan? tryptophan? Um, in walnuts. So that's why you crave sugary sweet things. I can't eat walnuts. So now I have to find something else. Cashews has, cashews have 20%, but they're really fattening like it's a high fat really high fat like I think cashews are the highest fat I will eat a ton of cashews so what I'll probably do is get some cashews and when I do my nut butter with the hazelnuts I'll add cashews into that so it'll be like a 50 50 that would be really good you'll wipe out a an elementary classroom with a jar of peanut butter nowadays they really are which makes me wonder, what are they doing to, okay, so peanuts grow underground. They're actually a root crop. They're not an above ground or tree crop. So they grow underground. They're, they're the roots. They're the pods on the roots. I'm thinking all of this allergy is not actually a nut allergy. It's the fat, a peanut allergy. It's the fact that our ground is so saturated with chemicals from growing things, from spraying the field. And when it's a root vegetable, it's gonna pull that into that so you're more susceptible to the poison in the ground because it's in the, the pulled up into the root. That's just my thoughts. <laughs> just open the lid and roll it down the aisle. <laughs> Also makes your poop good, so it's a win. Huh. I like to munch on walnuts and pecans. I had two huge pecan trees in my backyard in Texas. I not oldest son has a nut allergy. Peanuts are the worst. That's why I think peanuts are the worst because I think they're the only ones that are a root, right? Out of the nuts, they're the only one that's grown underground. So you, you get the direct chemical in the ground, not like nuts that are grown on the tree where it has, the chemical has to go up through the tree to get to the nut. So there would be less chemical in, let's say a pecan, a walnut, a cashew, all of those other, and that's why there's so many peanut allergies. Makes sense to me. Look, I can rationalize and justify with the best of them. <laughs> hmm. Oh, what is that? Let Letherin, which is bad for the gut. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that totally wrong. Follow April. She is of the woods. She has a recipe for hazelnut extract with glycerin. Oh, okay. I'll go check that out. Thank you. KJ, my allergies are not food related. Thank goodness. And they're so much better this year. The move and the shots are helping. Almonds are inflammatory. Um, it's one of the things that they were, someone was talking about with this whole push on almond milk, that it is super inflammatory. And a lot of people are seeing these um, results and stuff from almond milk. I drink almond milk for a little bit. I love almonds. I have not eaten a lot of almonds or hardly any almonds in the last, since I've been up here. So almost for three years. So 
And that makes me sad because I love almonds. <laughs> uh, Colleen agrees with me on the peanuts. Almonds are the worst. Well, I've got to edit tomorrow's video. Tomorrow's video is probably going to go out late. It's probably going to be around 11 o'clock. I don't know how that affects everybody. Um, and I am going to do the live in the bottom. But I'm going to try and finish up a couple of things tonight since the boys are now gone. And and then I'm going to edit that video and get it out tomorrow. If, if for some reason it doesn't go out tomorrow, it'll probably go out on Friday or maybe Thursday. Because then I would have a whole other day to finish working. I don't know. I'm trying to decide on my schedule of how I'm working on things. And I, I don't know if Wednesday is working for me, but I also feel like I just need to get in the swing of how. So normally what I do is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday are my working days. Sunday is church Bible study. Monday is editing Tuesday, I finish editing and I upload. Video goes out on Wednesday. So that schedule just seems so perfect, right? <laughs> well, if I get busy for any reason doing anything else on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then normally Wednesday is like my prep day. And then so I clean up. I get everything moved to where it's not in the way. And then I can work. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then, you know, then I have at least three days worth of work that goes into that week's video. And then I have the time to edit it and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't know. Let's just dump the nut and go chocolate. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Thanks, Carla. So Good night, Brenda. When are you coming? When are you getting back up here? When are you guys getting back up here? Is it May? Are you going to come back up in May again? I am totally ready for better weather. We've been still chilly, um, cloudy, rain on and off. Um, but we're out of the like cold. Other than, you know, it's rainy. I don't know. When it's rainy, I get colder inside. Like, so I still am running the heat and every now and then I'll throw a fire in the fireplace just to get it really warm in here. But that's on the days that it, we get like rain. Like I want it to be super cozy and warm. But then when it's really warm in here, I don't want to work because then I'm hot. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that. But all right, guys, I'll see all of you um, hopefully tomorrow in a video. If not. It, there will be a video going out this week. I'm just not really sure which day it's going to go out. Um, but most likely, I'm just going to take the stuff that I have right now and create a video out of it. So at least there's a video. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me. Bye. Yep. Why is the little X on that side?